Hi, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Uh, to discuss further into the polynomial remainder theorem and now look at a result of it which is going to be called the factor theorem and, uh, and just a brief uh, example on factorization using this factor theorem. So let's just jump right in. First of all, recall that the polynomial remainder theorem from my earlier videos states that the remainder of the division of a univariant polynomial or just a single variable polynomial by the polynomial x minus k where k is just a constant yeah, is just equal to f of k. In other words, yeah, the remainder is equal to uh, f of the k. We plug in that constant k inside this function to get the remainder. In other words, what we have is if we have f of x is the polynomial divided by x minus k. In my earlier videos I used a uh, instead of k, but I just changed it for k because yeah, because I used a different page for Wikipedia from Wikipedia and that uses k, so we'll just go with k right here. So recall when you divide something like this, you, what you end up getting is a, well, a quotient, I'll call it q of x plus a remainder r of x like this, yeah, divided by just that part right there, so it's a fraction of this x minus k like that. And where this remainder r of x is going to be actually equal to f of k like that. And if you just rearrange this, what you end up getting is to multiply everything by x minus k. Just show you the typical Euclidean division format that I've covered. What we end up getting is a, just multiply everything, we'll get an x minus k. So this cancels over there, and then q of x, and then this one cancels with that. That just equals to plus f of k like that. And over here is just the, yeah, this is f of uh, k, I mean, not x. This is just the remainder. That's right, remainder like that. Yeah, so now let's look at this so-called factor theorem. So from Wikipedia in algebra, the factor theorem is a theorem linking the, zero, the, the linking factors and zeros of a polynomial. It is a special case of the polynomial remainder theorem, and the factor theorem states that a polynomial f of x has a factor x minus k if and only if f of k is equal to zero, i.e. k is a root of this. In other words, this is a remainder is zero, has remainder equal to zero like this. Now if the remainder is equal to zero, well we know the remainder is over here, f of k, so that just equals to f of k like that. Yeah, so thus if we have it, uh, this, yeah, we could basically write this down over here. So that, that's what we have is f of x equals to x minus k times it by the quotient q of x, and then well plus f of k over here, this just goes to zero, right, this. Yeah, in other words, we can just divide this cleanly out. So we have f of x equals to x minus k q of x, like that. So this is just a factor of, of f of x. And you could also write f of x over x minus, uh, yeah, minus k just equals to q of x, the polynomial, like that. So that is how you could write out a circle, this one over there. So yeah, this theorem is just a special case of the polynomial remainder theorem, which I've proved in my earlier video. So that's just one remainder zero. So we could use this uh, factor theorem to uh, factorize polynomials. So let's look at this brief section of factorization of polynomials from Wikipedia. There's two, uh, two problems where the factor theorem is commonly applied are those of a factoring of, uh, yeah, of factoring a polynomial and finding the roots of a polynomial equation. It is a direct consequence of the theorem that these prob problems are essentially equivalent. So yeah, by finding the roots or the zeros of a polynomial and factoring it, are, yeah, it's the exact same thing. So if we want to factor this f of x, we just have to find where it's zero, and then that becomes a factor. So it's the same thing. And the factor theorem is also used to remove known zeros from a polynomial while leaving all unknown zeros intact, thus producing a lower degree polynomial whose zeros may be easier to find and, and uh, to show an example on this, let's go over an example on this just to uh, illustrate this concept. So let's say we have a polynomial f of x equals 2x to the cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. So if we want a, a lower degree polynomial, this one's degree 3, so if we want to lower it, we want to factor this out. So what we could do is yeah, it's tried to uh, yeah factor it by reducing 
the degree, in other words, yeah, just find out when f of x equals 0. So what we'll do is I'm going to guess. So one way of doing it is by guessing. So I'm going to guess. Um, yeah, so I'll guess x equals to 1, just, just so it's simple to plug in. So if we, if we have f of 1 like this, plug that inside, this becomes 1 cubed is just 1. Minus 4 times 1 squared is just 4. Yeah, that's 1 there. It's 4 times 1. And then plus 1 and then plus 6. What we end up getting here is, well, this is going to be, well, 2, 1 plus 1 is 2. That becomes 8. So of 8 minus 4, this equals to 4. So this, you know, this is not equal to 0, so not a root. So here is not a root or factor, so not a root. Yeah, but notice here, here's a good way to guess here, because uh, this one here is x cubed, so if we put a negative inside, we'll get a negative, and x, if we get put a negative, we get a negative. If, we, if this was negative in here, it just always becomes positive. But then we had, look, we had a negative 4, and then we had plus 1, plus 1, and, but if these were negative, so, yeah, right here, so right, if negative, uh, then we get a factor. If uh, negative, we would have had a factor then get root or you have to rearrange that. So if negative, then it's just a root like that. Sort for the grammar there. I just wanted to put a little note there. And so that, that means that if we had if we guess x equals one, we'll just guess x equals negative one. So guess right here. So so yeah part of guessing. Uh, some of them are pretty easy to do, some aren't. So guess like this um, x equals 2, negative 1. So when we plug that in, f of negative 1, we get, well, negative 1 cubed is just negative 1, because it's an odd, uh, yeah, odd power, so it's always going to be, you, you save the negative. And then we minus 4 times negative 1 squared is just, well, that is just going to be uh, positive negative 1 squared, it's just 1 like that, plus, and then we have a negative 1 like that, negative 1 in the x plus 6. So in other words, what we end up getting is, I'll just put this for completeness, this just equals to negative 1 minus 4 minus 1 plus 6, and then in other words we get negative 6 plus 6 equals to 0. So this is a root. So this is uh, a root, a yeah, root of fx. Yeah, so that's what it is. So the, as, as I showed here, it's, it's finding the roots and factoring a polynomial are essentially equivalent because now what we have is f of x is equal to x minus, uh, yeah, minus, uh, I mean minus a, um, yeah, minus negative one like that of, and I'll just write this as q of x like that. In other words, this is just, this just becomes the negatives cancel. This equals to, this is by factor theorem. By factor theorem above. Yeah, so that was just by factor theorem as I was just explaining. So if you plug in f of k is equal to zero, so now we have an x minus k. And then we get another polynomial over there, which should be simpler. And then this one, yeah, this becomes x negative, uh, minus negative one is just plus one, like that, q of x. So now if we want to solve for this q of x, we could, well, just divide that out. I'll just use polynomial long division. So what we get is uh, rearrange that. So I'll put that all over here. We have f of x equals to x plus one, q of x, like this. And then we can rearrange, so we have f of x divided by x plus 1 equals to q of x. And then we just use polynomial long division, and I'll do that over here. So we'll have it like this. I'll put x plus 1 here, that's the divisor, and then f of x, which equals to, remember that x cubed minus 4x squared, minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. So do it like this, and then multiply um, x by another term to get x cubed, that's just going to be, well, x squared. Put that over, that's just x cubed. Minus, I mean, that just becomes plus x squared. Now we subtract, so this cancels. Negative four minus 
uh, 1, that just becomes negative 5, and then there's an x squared. Bring it down the x, so plus x. And now we need to get the negative 5x squared, so we'll multiply here. This is just easy, that's negative 5x. Multiply it inside, it becomes negative 5x squared, and then this multiply by that, negative 5x. Subtract both here. Then uh, x minus negative 5x, that becomes positive, so we get a 6x like that. Bring down the 6, we have plus 6. Lastly here, to get, to get 6x, we have plus 6. Then we get a 6x, then 6 times 1 is just 1. Subtract, we get a 0. So this is our q. Yeah, so let's pull, plug in. This is over there, that's our q. Like that. So what we end up getting is... Yeah, so thus, thus we have f of x is equal to x plus 1, and then we have the q of x, which is going to be that answer there, x squared minus 5x plus 6. And you can learn more about polynomial remainder, I mean, yeah, polynomial long division in my earlier videos. And yeah, we could uh, stop right here, or we could go even further, but as you can see here, this uh, degree is 2, degree of this polynomial, and that's simpler, or yeah, less than the degree of the original one, which is x cubed over there. So we can even keep going further, and now what I'll do is I'll let, uh, actually we already have q of x, so we can go further and factor this one out, q of x is equal to x squared minus 5x plus 6, and then what we could do is uh, guess another number and think about what we, should we guess. Well, if we notice here, if we put a 2 in here, we get a uh, negative 5 times 2. That becomes negative 10. But then we also have this 2 squared would be 4. So negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. <laughs> so that's that in my head. So I'm going to guess x equals to 2. And then we'll have q of 2 equals to 2 squared minus 5 times 2 and then plus 6, this equals to 4 minus 10 plus 6, uh, 4 plus 6 is 10, this just equals to 10 minus 10 equals to 0, in other words, this is a root. So because it's a root, we have q of x is equal to x minus the root, which is 2, and then we have a new function, I'll write this as p of x a new one here, and we could solve for p of x by again doing polynomial long division, so we have x minus 2, and then put q of x, which is x squared minus 5x plus 6. So we'll do this one, same thing, multiply a number to get x squared, we have x, x times x is x squared, x times negative 2 is negative 2x, subtract all this, uh, negative 5x minus negative becomes positive, so negative 5x plus 2x is negative 3x. Carry the 6, we have plus 6 like that. And now over here, to get here, we just put a negative 3. So we have a negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 2 is plus 6. Subtract, we get 0. So this is p of x, like that, this whole thing. So in other words, what we end up getting is, so I'll write finally, or finally, to, to get it super simplified, uh, now what we have is, uh, is q of x is equal to, um, yeah, is equal to x, uh, this was, uh, yeah, minus 2, times it by, now we have x minus 3. Yeah, so that's what we have, and uh, f of x, is equal to, yeah, fx equal to x plus 1 times q of x, which equals to uh, x plus 1. Now we have this right here, x minus 2, and then we have x minus 3, like that. In other words, we could put this all together, and then we have a uh, x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6 equals to, and these are the factors of all of them, x minus 2, x minus 3, like that. And if, if you can see here, if you plug in x equals to 2, this whole thing goes to 0. So it should be a 0 as well. So you can even guess here, even if you have x minus 3, uh, that becomes, uh, if you plug in just x equals to 3, this all goes to 0. So we can even see it as, let's put this over 
here f of x equals that. So we have that giant one over that. And you could even guess by, because the zeros of any of the polynomials that are factors uh, of it, or that we derived, the simple ones are still going to be factors of the overall one. You can even plug them here, right here. All right, note f of 2, for example, right here, is going to be equal to 2 cubed uh, minus 4 times 2 squared plus 2 plus 6. This equals to 2 to the cubed is 8. So 2 times 2 times 2, so it's 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. Minus here, 4 times 4. And then plus 2 plus 8, that's just going to be 8. So 8 plus 8 is 16. 4 times 4 is 16. So we have 16 minus 16 equals 0, as it should be. So the root of the simpler one is still the root of the overall one. And uh, you, even if you plug in f of 3, you still get 0. And as you can see here, you can just plug in 3, this whole thing goes to 0. And uh, yeah, that is all for today. I hope you learned this uh, interesting video on factorization using the factor theorem, which is just a result of the polynomial uh, remainder theorem, or just a special case uh, of that uh, theorem. So again, make sure to watch my earlier videos on Euclidean division and polynomial remainder theorem and the proofs to understand how this all works. I'll be using this in later videos. Anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and uh, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below, as well as viewing these notes on Steemit, and also make sure to check out my math and science uh, forums, or my math forums on Reddit and Vote, and post any cool math or science related stuff you find. Anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for another math easy solution.